Hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar titled Summarize Your Data and Perform Hotspot Analysis in ArcGIS Online. My name is Ian Greensmith, and I'm a higher education analyst working in the Education and Research Group out of our Toronto office. Some housekeeping items before we get started. When you join the webinar, you would have been prompted to join the audio broadcast. To listen in, you basically have two options. First one is to dial in using the toll-free number provided on screen, or alternatively, if you're not on your phone or you would rather listen in through your computer speakers or headphones, you're more than, uh, more than capable of doing that as well. For the best view of today's presentation and any demonstrations that I'll show, click the full screen button on the WebEx toolbar to put the presentation into full screen mode. At any point during the session, you can click the big blue arrow button to return to the default view. Throughout this session, if you have any questions about the content being presented, please use the chat window. Be sure to choose presenter or alternatively look for my name, type your question into the box and then click send. Please feel free to type your questions in at any time or if you would rather email me offline, I'll have my contact information up on the closing slides. Also, this session is being recorded and the recording in the presentation, a PDF copy of the presentation will be made available after the webinar ends. ArcGIS Online is quickly becoming a powerful platform for spatial analysis. In this webinar, we will discuss how specific analysis tools can be used in ArcGIS Online. Specifically, we will focus our discussion on an analysis workflow to illustrate how these tools can be used to solve a spatial problem. So let's move into our first section and make sense of where these analysis tools fit compared to existing tools in the ArcGIS platform that you may already be familiar with. The ArcGIS platform has a number of different components. The graphic that's here on the slide, you may have seen something similar to this, whether it's in previous webinars or uh, conferences or presentations in the past. While the desktop is still a common application where spatial analysis takes place, a lot of the same analysis tools you are already familiar with in the desktop are now available in ArcGIS Online. For this webinar, we're going to focus on the following tool sets. That is, summarize data and analyze patterns. I want to note that future webinars will focus on different tool sets and workflows, and I'll be sure to provide more information on them at the end of the webinar. Access to analysis tools in ArcGIS Online requires an identity. Your identity is your passport, where through a username and password, you can access and interact with online content and tools from multiple devices, just as the diagram on the previous slide suggests. With your identity comes a role, and with that role comes specific privileges and capabilities. Those roles that relate to spatial analysis include the ability to create items, to publish those items as hosted feature layers within ArcGIS Online. In addition, there are, you'll need access to specific premium content privileges, depending on what you and your students are trying to do. So as the image on the screen suggests, whether you want to go through a, a geocoding workflow spatial analysis or even uh, geo-enrichment work, uh, type workflow, those type of capabilities can be enabled or disabled depending on what you want to do. For this webinar, we're going to assume that you have sufficient privileges to be able to perform analysis either through a publisher role or custom role that's been assigned to you. I want to quickly comment on credits or service credits at this stage. Service credits, as you may be aware, are the currency used by ArcGIS Online services to perform specific tasks. Credit quotas can be assigned based on a, a, a specific named user, a group of users, or even based on a role. And this can be ideal for class assignments and general credit management across your organization's subscription. In ArcGIS Online, analysis tools are most commonly accessed from the map viewer. However, some of these tools can be accessed directly from ArcGIS for Desktop and ArcGIS Pro. With regards to Desktop, you'll see here in the catalog window that once I sign in with my same credentials, I have two folders here, one titled My Host Services, so this gives me access to all of the content that I host in ArcGIS Online, and a second folder titled Ready to Use Services, so these are my utility services, these are my uh, give me access to premium content services that I mentioned in an earlier slide related to geocoding, network analysis, and so on. With regards to Pro, 
a lot of the same tools that you're going to see in ArcGIS Online are built right into the Analysis tab in ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro is built with web mapping in mind, so you'll be able to access all the same tools and all of your content as well. I want to quickly note on a Portal for ArcGIS. Portal, for those of you who aren't aware, is the on-premise equivalent of ArcGIS Online. Portal can be configured to use the utility services available through ArcGIS Online based on an ArcGIS Online identity. And finally, apps like GeoPlanner or even custom-built apps using the Web App Builder can take advantage of these spatial analysis tools as well. So quickly, what I want to do is just jump out to um, some of our applications here and show you how, how you would access these tools. So the first place I'll start is in ArcGIS Online, and that's, this is just from our feature, or one of our feature landing pages. To sign in, I'll just uh, click on the sign in button. Now my browser remembers my, uh, my username and password, that's fine. In this case, I can uh, click sign in, and it's gonna take me into my organization page. To access those analysis tools, I'll click on Map. This is going to bring me into the Map Viewer. From there, I can click on my Analysis tab here and get access to any tool that I'm interested in. And if I want more information on a specific tool, like for example, this uh, there's a new uh, Choose Best Facilities tool, I can click on the blue information button and find more information about it. If we change gears and go over to ArcGIS Desktop, remember this is access to these tools and services are based on your identity. Directly within ArcGIS Online, I can sign into, or directly with ArcGIS Desktop rather, I can sign into ArcGIS Online right from the file menu and choose the sign in option. And notice in my catalog window, my two folders here, my hosted services. If I click on that, it will reveal all of my hosted feature layers that I have here, and then any of the uh, utility services or ready-to-use services that I had, had mentioned in a previous slide. And if I double-click on any of these services, I will come across specific tools that I can incorporate into, in, into my workflows here directly within desktop. Last thing I want to show here is within ArcGIS Pro. So as I mentioned, all of the uh, tools can be accessed directly from the Analysis tab here. I can expand them, and you'll see that uh, a lot of these have uh, similar icons and similar naming conventions, so they're going to be quite, quite easy to find. Also, uh, notice one more thing here in ArcGIS Online, that I'm automatically signed in. And uh, up until the 1.2 release, and even including the 1.2 release, you, you need to have a ArcGIS Pro license assigned to you to be able to, uh, to launch Pro, to, to open Pro. And then once you're in Pro, you can take advantage of content and services that are made available to you your colleagues, or even uh, take advantage of uh, items that have been shared with specific groups directly within Pro. So it's uh, varying capabilities across the platform, but the, uh, the, the thing to reinforce here is that uh, identity gives you access to all of them. So with that, let's, uh, let's switch back to our slides here and continue on with uh, the next section. So now that we've covered how to access these tools, Let's move on and use these tools in an applied workflow. To help illustrate these tools, I'm going to walk you through the following workflow. Uh, and really to, to help focus the discussion, I'm going to use a, a series of analytical tools in an attempt to explain crime rates in Halifax, Halifax Nova Scotia. Now, the workflow that you see on screen, uh, some of you might be familiar with the geographic inquiry model that uh, Esri's education team has been promoting for years now. This, is, uh, this workflow that you see on screen is akin to asking a question, uh, a geographically loaded question, acquiring data, examining that data, analyzing it, performing analysis, and then finally reviewing the results and acting on them. So with our focus defined, we must first evaluate what data we need to answer this question. Now there are various supported layers, that is data types and services, that can be used as inputs in an analysis tool in ArcGIS Online. And these range from feature services, that is services that are published 
and host it through ArcGIS Online or alternatively through ArcGIS for Server, uh, ranging down to text files and shape files, and those two formats I'm going to be working with today in the demonstration that I'm going to show you, and ranging all the way down to uh, even uh, graphics that you add to the map on your own in the form of map notes. All of those types of layers can be used as inputs into, uh, into an analysis workflow. For the purposes of this webinar, we're going to use data from uh, two, two different sources. The first is the uh, crime data that I've downloaded from the Regional Municipality of Halifax's Open Data Catalog. And this specifically are uh, recorded assaults over a one month period in 2013. I downloaded that data and it, uh, it now exists in a, in a text file format. The second data source is from Statistics Canada and I downloaded the census tract information for 2011 from their geographic uh, boundaries web page, downloaded that and clipped it to the study area, study area for Halifax. So now that I know what data I, I want to use and I've downloaded that data and got it ready to basically add to the map, I need to decide how I want to add that data to the map. Now whether you're, when publishing content, you have a few different options available to you. What I'll walk you through in, in today's uh, webinar is uh, related to adding data into the map viewer directly. Alternatively, if you are working in ArcGIS Desktop or ArcGIS Pro, you can publish your services directly from there. And then finally, if uh, you are publishing content that is, um, one, one other option is that if you want to publish content directly to your My Content folder, you have the ability to do that. Uh, this specifically comes in handy if you have content that you're not publishing directly from Desktop and Pro, and uh, the number of features within a data set is greater than 1,000, you'll be prompted uh, to do it within My Content because you won't be able to do it uh, directly from the map viewer. But once your data is added to the map, so with those, with those three options uh, taken into consideration, and I'll, I'll show you this in the, first, in the, in the next uh, demonstration as well, you have some visualization options to consider. By default, with any data set that you add uh, on your own into, into the map viewer, you uh, will take advantage of the new smart mapping capabilities that exist. Now, you have also have the option to set any symbology and classification schemes as you, as you wish as well. There are, are uh, future webinars that are going to take place later on in the year that will discuss uh, the, smart mapping, uh, the smart mapping capabilities in further depth, but I just wanted to touch on that briefly here. Uh, two more things to consider in terms of visualization options relate to the, the map extent. So that is uh, at what scale you want, uh, you want your content to be drawing at. And then finally, depending on if you have multiple uh, study, study areas, for example, uh, spread across a region, spread across a country, and the like, you have the option to set up uh, bookmarks as well. Even, even pop-ups can be considered in this. So now that we've uh, decided what data we're going to add into the map, we can now move forward and investigate the tools that are going to help further our investigation and our workflow. The summarized data tool set contains tools that calculate total counts, lengths, areas, and basic, basic st descriptive statistics of features and their attributes within areas or near other features. An example of this from this category is the aggregate points tool. Similar to the spatial join tool from ArcGIS for Desktop, this tool completes a point in polygon spatial join and then summarizes all points in each polygon via a count with optional statistics. For example, minimum, maximum, and standard deviation. This tool requires a point layer and a polygon layer for it to work. So it's well suited for our workflow based on the data that we've collected. A compelling alternative for you to review are the new Living Atlas layers that make it possible to aggregate to alternative geographic boundaries. The hex bin layers are represented by a mesh of connected hexagons commonly used for aggregating and summarizing spatial data at various grid sizes. An added bonus is that the Living Atlas analysis layers don't even need to be added to the map. Rather, you just browse to and reference them. So let me uh, just jump back into ArcGIS Online here and I'll show you the adding data workflow in addition to uh, walking through the summarized data 
uh, or the aggregate points tool. So here in, in ArcGIS Online, there are a couple of ways to add data into your map. If you're working with a text file or a CSV file, I have the option to uh, drag and drop a file directly into the map depending on the browser that you're using. So with my assaults text file, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll drag and drop that onto the map. And notice here that uh, immediately symbology and classification have been assigned to, to, the, to the data layer that I've added. Now, I'm not interested in, in my workflow, I'm not interested in showing specific attributes. I'm really only interested in showing the locations. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, click this drop down arrow here for what I want to show, and I just want to show the location. My symbology will update on its own, and I'll click done, and I'll be able to proceed. Now, the next data set I want to add relates to, it is actually the census tract data, but they're stored in a zip file, and that's how uh, a spatial data set, whether it's a uh, shape file or data from a file geodatabase, needs to be uploaded into ArcGIS Online. But I can't drag and drop it onto the map. To get it into my map, I need to go choose an alternative route. And I do that through the Add menu. So from Add, I'll scroll down to Add Layer from File. And here, I'll just browse to where I have it saved. Select it, oh. open it, and then import the layer right in. So you'll see here that, again, Smart Mapping Utility uh, comes alive and looks, in the, looks at the attribute information that I have stored in, uh, for, for different census tracts uh, for, for the data that I have. Again, I'm only really interested in showing the locations at this time, so I'm going to turn that utility off. Symbology will update, click done, and I'll just drag this, uh, and drag this below so the points show up nicely. So that's the data. We've got the data in now. Now I actually want to perform some analysis. So the first thing we want to do, remember, is to access our analysis tools. I can access my analysis tools uh, through the analysis tab here, or in the table of contents, I can hover over any eligible layer and uh, simply click the uh, perform analysis icon to bring up the same tool sets. The aggregate points tool that we're interested in is contained within the summarized data tool set. So I'll, I'll click on that and open up the window. And you'll notice that it pre-populates based on the data, some of the layers that are already within my table of contents. It finds the point layer, so the point layer is my, is my assaults uh, data set. And then it also has identified that uh, the census tract layer is what I want to aggregate my data up to. Now, I will be using this option, but one thing to show you as I, as I did talk about the, uh, the living atlas layers as well, is that I can access them directly from here. So if I choose this drop down arrow and click on uh, choose living atlas analysis layer, this will bring up a new dialog where I can browse to all of the hex bin layers there are that based on my map extent, I'm, I, I'm eligible to use and aggregate to. Now, again, for the purposes of this workflow, I'm just gonna be using the census tract, but it's, it's quite easy just to browse to uh, a given hex bin layer point to it, and then uh, aggregate your data up to that. So I'd like you to look at that on your, uh, after the webinar completes. So moving on in, uh, with regards to this tool, I'm going to uncheck this option to keep areas with no points, because I'm not interested in keeping additional data around if it's not going to help me in my analysis. With that unchecked, I'll uh, touch on two more things related to capturing statistics. So whether I wanted to catch a minimum, maximum, or a standard deviation and other statistics, I can capture those here. Alternatively, I can actually even group my results as well. But uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not overly interested in that, so I'm going to accept the defaults. I'll even accept a, a default naming convention. And then I'm going to set my uh, two or three, the three final things I want to point out here on the, on the tool is that I'm going to set my working directory. So my working directory is very similar to your uh, working directory in uh, ArcGIS Desktop and ArcGIS Pro. I'll set that here. And uh, second is the map extent. Now, setting, having this option checked on is, a, is always a good idea. And that means that it, the tool is only going to take data into consideration that fits within the map extent. Finally, are, is this option to show credits. Clicking this is going to 
highlight the total number of credits that are needed to perform this, this analysis, this aggregation. So you can see here that there are 267 records being used in the analysis, but it's only using a quarter of one credit to actually do all the work. So with that in mind, I'll click Run Analysis, and it goes out to ArcGIS Online, uses the, uh, the aggregate points tool, and what we get back are, and what you'll see in, in a matter of seconds, is a new layer with using only the uh, census tracts that we're interested in with all of the, assault, all of the uh, assaults aggregated and counted within, uh, within that layer. So that's coming in now. I'll turn off my original data so you can see exactly what this data looks like. If I open my attribute table, you'll see that I have a new field called a point, a count the points or point count. It's a, but uh, this is an alias here, but you can see the total counts. So that's a, that's a powerful tool, and uh, that concludes actually the, this uh, what I wanted to show in this section. So I'll switch back to our slides and I'll move forward with uh, with the workflow. Based on the aggregation results produced, it's worth calculating an assault rate and storing it within the result layer. To achieve this, we can use the expression builder. The expression builder functions a lot like the field calculator that's available within ArcGIS Desktop. It's worth noting that the ability to calculate, just like adding a field or deleting a field, are only available for hosted feature layers. That, again, that is those layers that are hosted within ArcGIS Online. In addition, you must be the owner of the feature layer, or at least the administrator in your organization to be able to manipulate those fields. However, you know, since we published the data, you're already owning the data, so this comment is kind of irrelevant, but it's, in co it's important to keep in mind in the future. It's also worth noting that the expression builder doesn't actually consume any credits. So you have uh, a wide array of tools that are available to you within this builder that uh, you can perform on specific fields, that won't consume any credits. So let's uh, let's jump back into ArcGIS Online and I'm going to show you how this works. To get to the expression builder, I go into my result layer here for my aggregation, uh, my point aggregation. I'm going to open my uh, my attribute table. And to get to what I want to do is I I need I want to uh, add an expression to a specific field that I've created ahead of time, and that's called a count by area. I click on the cog wheel here and select the option calculate and this will open the expression builder. Similar to the field calculator I can select what I want to include uh, within, my, uh, within my expression so in this case I want to uh, normalize the point counts by square kilometers verify that and it, see that my, uh, my expression has been verified. Now, note the addition of the cast function that exists in the, in the final expression. This happens because you are calculating a field that is the count by area field that has a double type based on another field with an integer type, which is the point count field. The addition of this cast in this case causes the point count field to be converted to a float first so that it can be used in the expression and calculated as a double data type. With that information, we're now able to calculate this field. So you'll see here that my, my rate has been calculated and, uh, throughout uh, all 51 records of, of, my new, uh, of my new data set. So let's jump back out to the slides and uh, continue on with our workflow. The next step in our analysis is to attempt to visualize any relationship that may exist among the aggregated points. To achieve this, we're going to turn to our Analyze Patterns tool set that contains tools to help you identify, quantify, and visualize spatial patterns in your data by identifying areas of statistically significant clusters. An example of this category is the Find Hotspots tool. Similar to the Hotspot Analysis tool from ArcGIS, on, or ArcGIS Desktop, this tool will determine if there are any statistically significant clustering in the spatial pattern within our data. So let's jump back to ArcGIS Online and see how this tool works. So using our, again, using our uh, aggregation of assaults as our input layer, I'll launch the Perform Analysis 
tools here. Click on Analyze Patterns and then launch the Find Hotspots tool. It, it, so it, because of the workflow of me selecting the aggregation of assaults, it knows that my input data set is going to be that data set. But in terms of what field I want to point it to, I don't want it to look at the count itself. I want it to look at the rate that I calculated. Now, alternatively, I could actually look at the count and then normalize based on the area in square kilometers here, but I elected to uh, hard code the, that, that rate directly within, to the, within the data. I'll accept the, the default uh, naming convention, confirm my working directory, and then finally, uh, as, a, as a best practices for any analysis workflow that you're going to do in ArcGIS Online, always confirm the total number of credits that are going to be used. In this case, there are 51 records being used as an input, and you can see the total number of credits, or not, not, even, uh, not even one credit being, being consumed. To, to produce this result. I'll click Run Analysis, and it, it'll go out, run the tool, and uh, pr produce a result. And what you're going to see is uh, it return, again, a, a, a polygon layer, but this polygon layer has been symbolized to showcase at areas of significant clustering, whether they're uh, hot spots, cold spots, or those areas that are not uh, statistically significant at all. So this data has now been added into the map, and uh, you can see here that if I click on my legend, I'll be able to see here that there are a number of uh, spots here that uh, have uh, some statistically significant areas, but others that do not. So what we'll do is we'll actually jump back to our slides and just, uh, just take some time to review the results that we're actually looking at. So the, one of the final steps in the workflow, or really the final step in the workflow, is to review your results. And in this case, based on what we've produced, the results of our analysis indicate that there aren't any statistically significant clusters evident in the data. The absence of clusters is an equally important result relative to evidence of clusters. When a spatial pattern is random, it is unlikely that there are any specific causal factors that explain deviations from randomness. Hence, in the results, you're looking for areas that are shaded red. That is, as I mentioned in the, in the demonstration, significant clustering for high assault values, or blue, significant, uh, representing a, those significant areas with low assault values. In both cases, there is evidence of clustering and likely underlying reasons that are worth investigating further. With that knowledge in hand, at this point, you really need to decide what your next steps are. Whether you share your results or not, there are options available to you, like sharing uh, your feature layers through a series of different web maps via store maps, story maps, or exporting the raw data itself. So in this workflow, what we're going to do is we're actually going to export the data for sharing purposes. To help facilitate that, the Manage Data Toolset contains tools that can be used both for day-to-day -day management of geographic data and for combining data prior to, prior to analysis. So what, the, what I'll show you in this final demonstration is how we can export our data to shapefile format and share, share them with our colleagues. So as a final step, I'll just click on the Analysis tab and expand the Manage Data Toolset. So again, here you'll see uh, a number of tools that you might be familiar with in with regards to overlay analysis, but uh, this uh, and day-to-day -day geographic operations. So what uh, what we're interested in is the Extract Data tool. I'll click on that to expand it, and then select what layers I want to include. Since I added all of this data. This, uh, these, these layers are all uh, eligible to be exported. But I'm only really interested in my analysis results, so I'll export my aggregation results and my hotspot results. I could actually set my study area for what I extract to be whatever I want, but I want it to match a specific data set. So I'll choose hotspots in this case. And um, finally, you get to choose the output format that you want. Now, for this uh, for this workflow, I want to export in a shapefile format. I'll set the default name, 
confirm my working directory, and then uh, again one one final thing before I hit run is to show the number of credits being consumed. Now, this uh, this usage report indicates that there are 102 records being exported. This actually makes sense because the aggregation of assaults data set were 51 records, and then that was the exact same data set was used as an input for the hotspots. So that's 51 plus 51 to give you the total number of records. And again, a negligible amount of credits being consumed. In fact, the total number of credits being consumed for this entire workflow is well under one credit. So I'll close this and then click Run Analysis. Now, the workflow that I've walked you through so far has always resulted in the layer being added into the map viewer. The difference with this tool running is that you can't add a zip file into, into the table of contents, much like I talked about earlier in the presentation. So what this uh, message indicates is that the data is being extracted and it's gonna be zipped up and added to my content. So what we'll do is we'll just, uh, we'll click OK. One, uh, one final thing I'll do is I'll just save my map. I'll just give it a, a name. Give it a tag so that I can, if I search for it at a later time, I can find it. And then also confirm my working directory here. I'll save my map. Now that that's updated, I'll go out into my content and navigate to my analysis working folder that's here on my uh, on the on the left hand side click on that and here you can see three the two out, uh, analysis layers that have, that I produced the web map that I saved and finally the data that I that I extracted and if I click on this or hover over rather this uh, drop down arrow and select download it will download as, uh, the zip file I don't know, I've configured zip file, or WinZip to open these files automatically, but if I double click into this folder, you'll see I have my two data sets, my hotspots result, and then my aggregation result. So a very efficient way of extracting data, and I can immediately share this with others. So let's switch back to our slides, and I'll just recap the entire workflow that we, that we walked through. So how we started this was uh, we, we downloaded data both from Statistics Canada and from the, the regional municipality of Halifax. I brought that data in ArcGIS Online and I used those as inputs into my aggregate points tool and that produced my aggregated results. From there, I wanted to hard code a, uh, a calculated rate of assaults per, per, uh, by uh, square kilometer. So I used my expression builder to do that. Based on that rate being calculated, I wanted to use that data set again as an input within my, hot, my Find Hotspots tool. And ultimately that gave me a result that I could uh, build research on, that I could export and share with my colleagues as well. To sum up our discussion today, there are a number of new tools available in ArcGIS Online that you can use. Specifically, we focused our discussion on select analysis tools available in the Summarize Data and Analyze Patterns tool sets. With the concepts and examples shown today, you should be able to apply them to your own project work. I want to remind you about the upcoming webinars being offered by our group during the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for emails from my colleagues if these webinars that are on screen are, are of interest to you. A great starting point for resources that we talked about today are found in the Esri Help documentation. Esri is quite good at communicating any plan changes so that their user community stays well informed. Also be sure to visit the desktop analysis page as it contains case studies that provide examples showing how analysis can be carried out both using ArcGIS Desktop and ArcGIS Online. For some homegrown Canadian examples, I invite you to check out our Esri Canada's Lesson Planner. If you're unfamiliar with our Lesson Planner, you'll find a wide range of learning resources that relate to what we, have, what we have discussed today. Whether you're looking for desktop, online, or solution-focused resources, the tools built into the search functionality 
allow you to quickly refine and find a learning resource that you can use. The second link on the page is a landing page to a tutorial that covers the exact workflow covered in today's webinar. So I invite you to take the time to review both of those links. On behalf of Ezra Canada, I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions.